If you all see my screen, you should see the Rapid Miner Studio design interface. This is Rapid Miner 7, and we're going to do just a quick high-level overview of how Rapid Miner Studio is laid out so that anybody who's new to Rapid Miner can really see how easy it is to use. For those that are already using Rapid Miner, good job. Thank you. So, in the upper left here is where we typically store our processes, the bits of operators chained together that form a process, whether it's for ETL or for text mining or something else, connecting to databases or to Hadoop or writing or so forth. All these processes and, and local data files are stored here. Now, all the operators, all the extensions, everything that you need to do text mining, whether it's with Rapid Miner or with Alien, are all found here. We have things like data access, connecting to Hadoop or connecting to flat files or to databases, anywhere where this data might live, this unstructured data. We have connectivity to things like Twitter or web mining or something like that where you can scrape text off of blog posts and so forth. These are all found in the data access. Then we have things like blending, which you're going to need to do for some ETL work, or cleansing, replacing missing tweets and things of that nature. And finally, stock, we have about 125 machine learning algorithms that run from neural nets to support vector machines to k-means clustering and algorithms and similarity measures and so forth. And finally, but last but not least, we have the extensions. And here, these are additional operators, additional functionality that I can download from our marketplace. Let's just show you right over here. You come up to the extension here, go to marketplace, and they extend to the power of Rapid Miner already. So let's just take a look at the top down notes here. And you'll notice some interesting things here. You'll notice that text mining is our number one download, followed by number four, which is Alien, which was just released a few months ago and has been very, very popular on our marketplace. And just an FYI, there's about 300 different packages available on, on the marketplace. Most of them are for free. Some of them are created by Rapid Miner. Some of them are created by third-party providers like Alien. Once you download the extension, then you have the ability uh, to actually access it and look at them. So let's just take a look at some of our text mining operation. Tokenize, see how I can drag this over? We can do tokenization. What about things like filtering stop words? We sure can do that as well, too. What about using your own dictionary of stop words? You could do that as well. What about actually uh, transforming or reading documents from files? You can do that, whether they're PDF, XML. Uh, text files or uh, HTML files. What about connecting to your mail server? If you really want to build a spam or read your email, you can definitely do that as well, too. So you can see here in this drag and drop way, it's really easy to do that. And also, another one of the extensions, which I downloaded, which we'll show here in a second, is, of course, the Alien extension, which gives you 11 more additional text mining type of um, operators to play with, to work with. Okay? So, Let's build a simple process, the one that we actually use to collect all the tweets. Start out with a blank process here. First, I'm going to use a search Twitter operator. So I'll come over here, type in ST for search Twitter. We drag it over. I'll make a connection to my result for it. Click on my search Twitter operator. Now, we said it's drag and drop, no coding. You can code if you want to. We do have the ability on the marketplace to include Python or R or some other SQL or something else. It's, we're a platform. We're meant to be flexible. But, with, but the best where we shine is really the no-code scene. So the way I do that is click on Search Twitter, come over here to the right where I change all my parameters. I click on my Twitter connection, and you can see here there's a little uh, Twitter icon. If you don't have a developer's token, you click on that and you get it. Type in my query, Super Bowl 50. In this case, um, since we are short for time, I'm going to say pull in 10 tweets. Come and say I only want the English language. And then come over here and run it. And it'll go out now to Twitter, pull in the 10 latest tweets related to Super Bowl 50. And you're presented with a very simple looking result. It looks like a spreadsheet. You can see the ID of the Twitter user, when it was created, from what users, so forth, some other information, other metadata and information, and of course, the actual tweet. But what's missing from here is the actual sentiment value uh, to actually understand, is it an objective tweet? Is it an opinion uh, or is it subjective and so forth? 
So you can get a little more, uh, you can get a little more uh, descriptive statistics by clicking on statistics here, and you can see what the data types were and so forth. A really handy different way to actually start looking at your data and, and poking through it. And if the data itself is, is lent to visualization, you can click on our charting capability, and you can do things like scatter plots, uh, series, uh, box charts, and different things like that. Okay. So now let's add in that alien extension. I want to analyze sentiment. So let's go look for analyze. Okay, here we go. Analyze sentiment. I drag it in like so. I come back over here and I make my alien connection. You do have to get a token from them, no problem. Select the actual field I wanted to work on, which is text, which is the tweet itself, and indicate the sentiment mode is a tweet. And then run it again. So now it will analyze those 10 tweets and give me four new columns. One is the subjectivity. Is it subjective or an objective? Handy for opinions. The polarity, also known as sentiment. Neutral, negative, positive if it is in here, in this case none. And of course the confidence levels of how confident is it that it truly is subjective or objective or the correct sentiment. Okay. Now we took this logic and we applied it to the 120,000 tweets. We just went out there, applied this process, and collected all that information, which we'll show you the result, but we're not going to do it today because that would probably take a, an hour or so or more longer to do that. So let's just take a look at what we got. Open up my next process here. Over here. And open up aggregate polarity. So when we first scraped 120,000 different tweets, we actually had to do a little bit of uh, ETL work first beforehand in Rapid Miner, where we actually had to take it down to 85,000. A lot of times there was some mix-up, the tweets didn't form right, or there was just blank tweets and so forth. So in the end, I come over here, I right-click, put a breakpoint after. We I think we ended up with about 85,000 tweets or so, and we kept a couple of columns for hashtags. We have the polarity, positive, neutral, and so forth, and of course the tweet. And what you'll see is that there's a lot of uh, retweets and things that we're going to actually cleanse that later on in our process and so forth. So we just wanted to get an understanding of what the distribution was between neutral, positive, and negative. So let's run this. Let's go back to a design. We used an aggregate, rapid minor aggregate operator, just to do simple aggregation. And here we have it. We could see that for the majority of the time, uh, about 75,000 tweets were neutral, uh, about 2,200 were negative, and close to 8,200 were positive. Okay, something to think about when you actually do more text processing down the line. Maybe you want to balance the tweet data, maybe not, but we're going to do some sampling off of this to bring this more into a balanced set. Okay, so now let's get to the art of text mining. I took all this information, I loaded all these tweets in, and I built this type of process. And let's talk about it. It looks complex, but it's not. It's really easy to understand in the workflow. I loaded the Super Bowl text tweet data, which we just saw, and then I created ETL process here. So what does this ETL process do? Let's double click on this, because it's a sub-process. I make some selections for the columns, I replace some missing values, there were some tweets which only had double quotes in it, so we replaced it with missing tweet, which we will then process and filter out later on. We make some, we make sure that the data is ready to be in a text format so that the rapid minor uh, text processing can, can handle it, and we do some filtering. We filter out that missing tweet column. Let's go back up one level. Now here's where we start doing some fun things. Here's where we actually look at extracting more value out of the text. Typically, when you tokenize non-letters, when you tokenize words, you strip out numbers. You strip out special characters like hashtags. Uh, you do some strange things. And a lot of times, that information can be valuable. So what you want to do is you want to be able to replace the non-tokenizable tokenizable words into something that that the machine learning or the text processing can actually pick up on and use. So for instance, I really don't like all those links. Of course, a lot of people retweet and they attach all these crazy links. 
So what I did was I just came over here using a regular expression to say anything with HTTP and anything after that, replace it with the word link. Okay. Likewise, hashtags. Anything with hashtag, I want to replace it with the symbol hashtag, replace it with hashtag. And I did this before for the at symbol, but I, what I did was I was doing some analysis and looking back and forth to see what I can do with the at symbol or without the at symbol. But I decided to, in this particular case, keep it disabled. So now, you do, this, you do these two ETL type of functions. Then you remove the duplicate tweets. Here's where we actually sample the data and make it more balanced. You click over here, click on balanced data. You see here I'm taking about uh, almost 20, almost 2,040 uh, samples of each class. And then I go into my text processing. So let's talk about that. Here you can generate word vectors. You can generate the typical term frequency, inverse document three vector creation. You can do term frequency or term occurrences. It's very flexible here. Uh, pruning. You can do pruning based on percent or absolute ranking. You can sit there and actually help prune out a lot more noise to make your text processing or text analysis even richer. But just like the other operators here, this is also a sub-process. Let's double click on that. And in here is where the magic happens. Here's where we tokenize. We talked about in non-letter mode. Heck, if you want to, you can actually specify characters to tokenize. This comes in very handy when you're dealing with things like emoticons or your smileys or some other weird or perhaps different languages. The beauty about RapidMiner's text processing and text analytics uh, extension is that it's language independent. You can do a lot with different languages because it takes a statistical approach to things. Okay? So let's come back here and do non-letters. I transform cases. I filter tokens, stop words. I generate great trigrams or bigrams. You can do other things like stemming. If you wanted to, you can use a stemming operator. You drag that in here. Or you can do even things like, like uh, extracting specific pieces of content out of your text by extracting, uh, wherever it is here, extracting information or other things. So it's very, very flexible in that case. Okay, let's come out, let's go up one level. After I did the text processing, I store them for use later on. I do some clustering. And ultimately, I write the results to Tableau. We have a Tableau operator, which you can also download, download from our marketplace that allows you to write the TDE format. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to run this process in real time, and we can inspect the results. It should take about 35 seconds or so. You can see down here in the lower bar, down here in the lower left here, you can see what rapid miner is crunching through. Whenever there's a green check mark, it's finished that process or finished that operation. And whenever you see the blue triangle, it means that it's currently running that right now. You can see here and add stored. Now it's doing clustering. And eventually it's going to store and write the Tableau extract file to my desktop, I believe. Yes, as a TDE file format. Okay. So it should be done here in a second or two. I think it was 40 seconds. I could be wrong here. There we go. And now it's writing to Tableau. And we should see the results here in a second. On the last tableau. And now the results. So we get two results. First, we get a word list. The word list is the tokenized words and trigrams or bigrams. We can filter on sort by word, sort by how many times they occur in the documents, how many times they occur overall. And you can see here, here's already a hint for prepping Mike for, for later on here to talk about. Amazon and Acura are very, very popular words in the tweets that we mind. Uh, things like Amazon Prime, uh, books, order, so forth, awesome. You can see also the distribution in neutral, positive, and negative classes as well. That's just a simple word list. Now let's get to the clustering. Here I used and before I go, let's just take a look at what's going on in clustering. I'm going to switch the design one more time here. This operator, it's a subprocess. Let's double click on it. Here I'm actually selecting all the tokenized words, all the, the unstructured data that became structured, and I'm running a k-means algorithm through it, doing some aggregation, pivoting them, and prepping them to output to this result. And here we have it. We have about three clusters. And let's take a let's investigate this. Cluster zero, 
Predominantly, the word Amazon shows up, followed by great, prime, Amazon prime, thanks, order, Kindle, different things like that. Cluster one, or the second cluster, is primarily around Acura, the brand Acura. The commercial looks, drive, getting, super, think, beautiful, all very interesting words to describe your Acura brand. And finally, the last cluster was just turned into a catch-all because Amazon was mentioned quite a bit. It's only one word in there. So it extracted out that noise and left you with an Amazon cluster that was actually a real thing. So while that's all been doing this here, let's go quickly take a look to our Tableau file. And you can see here it generated two Tableau TDE files, which you can then now pull into, or pull into Tableau and visualize. 